Okay, guys, you need to watch this because she completely hit the nail on the head in this video. So you, you guys, you need to see it. You need to see it. Thank you, Chair. So um, let's play a game. Let's play a lightning round game. I'm going to be the bad guy, which I'm sure half the room would agree with anyway. And, um, and I want to get away with as much bad things as possible, ideally to enrich myself and advance my interest, even if that means putting, uh, putting my interests ahead of the American people. So, uh, Mrs. Hobart Flynn. Oh, and by the way, I have enlisted all of you as my co-conspirators. So you're gonna help me legally get away with all of this. So, Mrs. Hobart Flynn, I want to run. If I wanna run a campaign that is entirely funded by corporate political action committees, is, that, is there anything that legally prevents me from doing that? No. Boom, hit the nail right on the head. You can say what you want about this woman, Ocasio-Cortez, but at this time, I actually agree with her. So let's keep okay. going. So there's nothing stopping me from being entirely funded by corporate PACs, say from the fossil fuel industry, the healthcare industry, big pharma. I'm entirely 100% lobbyist PAC uh, funded. Okay, so let's say I'm a really, really bad guy. And let's say I have some skeletons in my closet that I need to cover up so that I can get elected. Um, Mr. Smith, is it true that you wrote this article, this opinion piece for the Washington Post entitled, these payments to women were unseemly, that doesn't mean they were illegal? Well, I can't see the piece, but I wrote a piece under that headline in the Post, so I assume that's right. Oh. Got him. Okay, great. So, green light for hush money. I can do all sorts of terrible things. It's totally legal right now for me to pay people off. And that is considered speech. That money is considered speech. So I use my special interest dark money funded campaign to pay off folks that I need to pay off and get elected. So now I'm elected, now I'm in. I've got the power to draft, lobby, and shape the laws that govern the United States of America. Fabulous. Now. Is there any hard limit that I have, perhaps uh, Mrs. Hobart Flynn, is there any hard limit that I have in terms of what legislation I'm allowed to touch? Are there any limits on the laws that I can write or influence, especially if I'm uh, based on the uh, special interest funds that I accepted to finance my campaign and get me elected in the first place? There's no limit. So there's none. So I can be totally funded by oil and, ga yeah, and gas. Here. I can be totally funded by big pharma. Come in, write big pharma laws, and there's no limits to that whatsoever. That's right. Okay. So, awesome. Now, uh, now Mr. Marabani, the last thing I want to do is get rich with as little work possible. That's really what I'm trying to do as the bad guy, right? So is there anything preventing me from holding stocks, say, in an oil or gas company, and then writing laws to deregulate that, that industry and cause, you know, that could potentially cause the stock value to soar and accrue a lot of money in that time? You could do that. So I could do that. I could do that now with the way our current laws are, are set up. Boom. Yes. yes. Okay, great. Okay, so my last question is, or one of my last questions, I guess I'd say, is, is it possible that any elements of this story apply to our current government and our current public servants right now? Yes. Yes. So we have a system that is fundamentally broken. We have these influences existing in this body which means that these influences are here in this committee shaping the questions that are being asked of you all right now. Would you say that that's correct, yes. Mr. Marabani? Or Mr. Sheldon? Yes. All right, so one last thing, uh, Mr. Schaub. In relation to congressional oversight that we have, right the limits that are placed on me as a congresswoman, Compared to the executive branch and compared to, say, the President of the United States, would you say that Congress has the same sort of standard of accountability? Are there, is there more teeth in that regulation in Congress on the President, or would you say it's about even or more so on the federal? 
Um, in terms of laws that apply to the president, mm -hmm. yeah, there's just almost no laws at all that apply to the president. So I'm being held, and every person in this body is being held to a higher ethical standard than the president of the United States. That's right, because there are some committee uh, ethics committee rules that apply to you. And it's already super legal, as we've seen, for me to be a pretty bad guy. So it's even easier for the president of the United States to be one, I would assume. That's right. Thank you very much. Hit the nail right on the head. Like, she's asking questions that people should have been asking years ago. Like, so, for all you people that don't know what she's actually saying, is that most people in Congress, or most people that work in government, have to be funded by corporate America. And in this conversation, she's saying that it's so easy to be paid off by corporate than ask the questions that they want you to ask. Like, why would you pay someone and then they, do, they don't do what you want? Like, oh, we want to give you money because we want you to make sure that this stays legal, blah, 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 that this stays a regulation, blah, 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 blah. But all these corporate people, they just want something to benefit their own. All these questions being asked do not benefit the people of the United States of America, which makes no sense. So basically, you can take bribes and there's no punishment, which is weird because we live in a country where it's illegal to gamble at some parts, yet it's okay to bribe a public official. That's what this basically is. It's basically bribe. Bribery. That's basically what it is. It's okay to gamble. It's not okay to, you know, bribe a police officer, but it's okay to bribe a member of Congress. That's basically what this is. That's what she's talking about. And she hit the nail on the head. And she asked a question that should have been asked a long ass time ago. It should have been asked a long ass time ago. And nothing has ever been done about it. And I'm glad people like her are actually saying it. Now, like I said, she's probably not your favorite person in the world. She, she sure as hell is not my favorite person in the world. Like, she says some things that I think is pretty freaking stupid, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that she's actually trying. And for once, she actually says a question, or asks a question that I can actually get behind and say, yes, you are correct. Why are they doing that? So let's see if there's any more to this video real quick. Mr. Roy of Texas is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Smith, I wondered if you might have any uh, comments on the uh, questioning by uh, my uh, colleague from New York. You seem to have a few notes you're writing down. Anything you want to say after after that discussion? Well, I, I would say there are a couple things, for example, that are, would not be. She answers, is there anything that, that, you know, could apply here? There are certain things that could not apply here. For example, the whole point of the article that she held up that I wrote was that you cannot use your campaign funds to make those kinds of payments. That would be right. illegal personal use. Right. Campaign funds are not dark money. They are totally disclosed, uh, right. so they are not dark money. It's worth noting, by the way, that earlier it was mentioned that dark money constituted about $1.7 billion. I believe that figure is uh, incorrect by a factor of about 500%. Uh, dark money constitutes about 2 to 4% of the total spending in U.S. elections and has always been involved in U.S. elections. So those are just a couple of points, and I, was, I, was, I, I did kind of chuckle at the question. Uh, is it possible, asked of us, that, that these influences are, this money is influencing the questioning here? To that, I'd say that's something you have to ask yourselves if you're being influenced and see what you think. If you are, you might question yourselves. If you're not, you might question this hearing. But you basically said that someone could get away with it. That's the point of her, her question. You're chuckling at it because you're a fucking asshole, Mr. Smith. She's asking a question, a legitimate question. He basically admitted that people can get away with this shit. That's basically what it said. Like, oh, if you can, if you can get away with it, you got to ask yourself. If that's the moral thing, blah, blah blah. That's not the point. The point is that people can get away with it. Uh, a couple of questions about super PACs, uh, as they are often referred to. Uh, are federal candidates allowed to coordinate with directly with a super PAC, and/or have anything to do legally with its formation? Uh, no, they are are not at the current time. No. Um, with respect to super PACs, is this a particularly partisan problem, or would you say both parties uh, have super PACs funding elections uh, and funding candidacies? Both do, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on this. I believe historically they've leaned more Republican, but in the last election cycle leaned more Democratic. I'm not 100% sure of that, but it's certainly a bipartisan issue. So if we deploy the famous let me Google that for you 
and we got this to come up to say, well, a bunch of headlines when you Google to say Democrat super PAC spending $3 million from Menendez in New Jersey, super PAC money dominated 2018 election in Colorado, and Democrats controlled in the cash race. Democratic super PAC translates ads to Spanish after seeing election day search trends. And if we went through and through and through, we would see that this is not a particularly partisan question or problem. It's just a baseline. Is that right, Mr. Smith? I think that's right. Uh, and when we think about what we're dealing with with respect to uh, campaign finance, uh, are you familiar with that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I, get a commercial? I got a commercial. I got a fucking commercial. So, you know, I'll probably leave a link in the description below so you can basically hear what they're talking about because this goes on this goes on for at least 17 fucking minutes and i don't know if you have time to sit here and listen to me when you can just do it yourself so the question was being asked and it seems that this guy this gentleman right here mr roy in a way somewhat agrees with her question so yeah you do have a system that's broken you know actually i studied uh politics american politics uh, back in college and uh, i'm actually going back to college to study again and like when i first read about this like basically you can lobbying is a basically a, a form of bribery so i don't know i don't know how they don't see the problem this is well if this happens you can basically ask yourself is that the moral question blah 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 if you would do it but the the point is people can get away with it and they're being influenced they can be influenced by these companies but no one seems to be concerned about it and that's something we should be worried about make sure that this actually has more restrictions on it so if you want to see more of the video leave the comment below i gotta go don't forget to like and sub to my channel i gotta go for now guys because this is a long ass video and i don't have time to show you the whole video you could probably watch it yourself so i'll see you guys later peace out